Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be going through all that lovely Nintendo Direct that happened yesterday at the time of recording. September. If you haven't seen it yet, then I recommend you watch it first, because I'm not going to be going over all the greater details in this thing here, because this is more what I think about things. Otherwise, we'll be here for well, as long as the Direct. Also, I'm not going to be going through it in the order that it was revealed in the Direct. I'm going to be going via the PR that Nintendo sent out officially, uh, so there might be a few minor details or minor things that aren't covered, and I'm going to be doing it in reverse order so that the more interesting stuff is at the end because that's more interesting, and it stops the end being a bit dull. But anyway, that is more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. Starting at the bottom, yes, we've got Yokai Watch Blasters. And to be honest, I have, I have no interest in Yokai Watch Blasters. It looks fine. It looks like a different take on the franchise, but it's just not my thing. And to be honest, I haven't played a 3DS in a very, very long time. It's, it's just like doing this now. The Switch has ruined me. There was also mention of some free update. It looks, it looks fine. That, it, it just, this was all happening at the start. Actually, that's convenient. This was all happening at the start. Um, and it just did not interest me. Unfortunately, because, yeah, 3DS. I mean, it was great, but I've moved on. Then there was Luigi's Mansion, which is the remake on 3DS again. It showed that you can do multiplayer and stuff like that. Again, yeah, it's fine. It's an old game being ported over. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's also nothing exceptional about it, you know? Moving on. Mario and Luigi, Bowser's Inside Story, plus Bowser Jr.'s Journey. Yeah, it's another remake coming to the 3DS. It looks fine. Uh, the Mario and Luigi games I've always enjoyed, but I didn't really think they needed re-releasing, per se. I mean, they were fun and, you know, definitely enjoyed them. Uh, Partners in Time, especially for me, because that was the one. I never played Superstar Saga, but I've heard it is the best. So Bowser's Inside Story coming? I heard that was marginally not as good as uh, Partners in Time. So I don't know, but... It's fine, you know, it's, it's just fine. This is the dull part of the direct, at least for me. Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. This was, this was completely out of the blue. I had no idea that they'd be bringing another Kirby game because the 3DS is just like a Kirby console now, which is no bad thing. But Epic Yarn, of all the things they could have brought over, I mean, fine, yeah, go for it. But it just, it just surprised me and it looks, it looks fine. Like all the 3DS stuff, it looks fine. It looks fine. Okay, now let's get on to the Switch stuff, and we're going to start small and then work up to big. Actually, no, you know what? Okay, let's talk about Nintendo Switch Online briefly. I'm only going to do this very briefly because I do actually have plans for a full video that I'm going to be talking about in regards to Nintendo Switch Online. But in this Direct, I was left quite disappointed because there were no real new bits and bobs to talk about. It was pretty much stuff that we already knew. There were a few minor details maybe but it's it, it opened up and it was like what can you do you know five key features and then it was like you can play online and you know even when you're miles apart and it's like yes we've been doing that i've not got a problem with paying for the online service i think it's fine but the way they dressed it up was just was just bad it was you know hey you can play online it's like if you if this had happened you know six months after the Switch launched, and I think that was the original plan, and it's a year late, then it would have been fine, you know, but we've been playing online for free for 18 months. They needed something more to get people interested, and this, you know, the Nintendo Direct is for essentially the hardcore audience and, you know, and the press like us. So they, you know, they really needed to pull out all the stops, you know, casual people are not going to be sitting down and watching the Nintendo Direct. They just don't. So they needed to pull something big, and they didn't. And, you know, they they talked about the um, the new features as well, you know, the, new, the special offers, and they said, what are they going to be? You'll have to wait a little longer. And that was a real slap in the face. There was also the controllers, you know, the NES controllers that slide onto the side. Cool idea, but charging $60 for it. Oh my God, that is way too much. That is way too much. These are just very simple controllers with a charging method that is you know, like a Joy-Con. You can't, I mean, I think that works out nearly the price of a Joy-Con. 
and the Joy-Con have got so much more going on in them. Maybe, maybe there's more to them than meets the eye and they've got motion controls and stuff like that, but there are so many third parties that already offer this for much less with more functionality. It's, 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 it's bad. If it had been 20 quid or even 30 quid for two controllers or dollars, whatever, your regional currency equivalent, then I would have said, yeah, you know, it's fine, it's a novelty, but my God, $60 for two controllers based on a system that is so outdated. It's just a bad, it's just, it's just a bad. And then there's the games themselves as well, and they don't inspire anything. It's a load of NES games. I think at one point they did say NES and SNES, but now in this direct they said, more NES games coming soon. And it was like, Really? We've all played these NES games, and if we haven't, or if somebody hasn't played them, that's probably because they're not interested in them. I mean, you could argue that yes, it's a freebie, it's a bonus, but this is the sweetener. This is the thing that is meant to make it nicer overall. And it's just not working. I mean, it's a cheap service, it is. I mean, if you do the, uh, the, the eight people family sharing thing, it works out at what? I think like $4.30 a year? It's cheap. But it's just not inspiring me, and I've been I've prattled on far too long about this, so let's move on. So here we are in the PR. We've got Lego DC Super Villains. Yeah, okay, why not? That seemed fine. It was only very brief. It was basically just said, yeah, it's coming, and then they moved on. Uh, NBA 2K Playgrounds 2, same situation. Looks fine. But again, we didn't really get any details that we didn't already know. Oh no, come back on. <sighs> Bloody computer went to sleep and I hate it when it does that. NBA 2K19, it's a basketball game. Apparently it's quite a good one. Again, I don't know. They didn't even release any Switch footage for bloody ages, did they? Until like, until release, I think. Which didn't sort of shine in confidence, but then everyone turned around and said, actually, you know, it's pretty good. So, you know, that's, that's fine. There's also FIFA 19, which is the same, same, same. It's, it's 18, but more. One more. Just Dance 2019, it's Just Dance again, isn't it? You know, again, no no problem with it. It's fine, you know, it's great that it's coming to the Switch because the Switch could always do with more arguably casual games. Um, you know, at least in terms of these big third parties, there are plenty of casual games that aren't from big third parties. So yeah, that's good that that's coming, but it's not my thing. Warframe, now this is more interesting, or at least to me it is. Having said that, I don't really know much about it, but apparently it's a big deal. And uh, it's coming to Nintendo Switch on the 20th of November. Woohoo! The world ends with you, Final Remix, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna. Now we're getting into some meat. Well, Torna, the golden country, if you want to be specific. I'm really excited for The World Ends With You. I never played it when it was originally on the DS. Yeah, it was the DS, bloody hell. And you know, to be able to play it in a more sort of sensible form factor with a Switch, or at least a more comfortable one for me, yeah, I'm down with that, you know, go with it. Um, but we didn't really see anything new, it was just like, last last time it was in a Direct, it was just like, it's coming, and they were just like, it's still coming! Which is fine, you know, again, it's, it's fine. We're on the fine section, but later on it gets fine. And then there's Torna basically just saying, yeah, it's coming. It, it, yeah, this, there's a lot of this at the moment. Starling, Battle for Atlas, again, nothing we hadn't seen before. I was hoping for something a little bit more detailed, and I was kind of hoping for Star Fox Grand Prix as well, if that even is a thing. It's looking less and less likely. Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. This is something that I'm pretty sure we knew about beforehand. I never played Diablo 3. I dabbled very, very briefly in Diablo 2 when that was a thing. My friends were all playing it and I was like, can I have a go? And they were like, yeah, sure. Gave me five minutes and then told me to bugger off. Mario Tennis Aces version 2.0 update. Yes, they are changing things and they're adding more modes and more stuff to do. And I kind of feel like that should have been it from the start. I mean, I like Mario Tennis Aces. I really do. I think it's a really good return to form, but it did feel a little bit lacking. By no means was it anything like Ultra Smash. That was that was beyond bare bones. But even so, I do feel that um, Aces just needed a bit more. And it looks like that maybe they've listened or maybe they planned this from the start and they're sort of releasing it later a bit like Splatoon to try and give it a bit more oomph. But I don't know. I think maybe it should have been there from the start. Don't think Tennis Aces really fits that style. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Splatoon 2 version 4 update. Yes! 
that he didn't actually say anything in the direct. I did feel this was a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, it was an interesting stylistic choice to do that, but it, all the information was just done visually and there was nothing to say whether, you know, what was happening and why, and there was, it was just hinting at things. And, you know, a direct is so that we can get loads of information and this felt more like a tease. And teasers work, but not about not about an update for a game, come on. I just think that the information that they ended up releasing online, which is, you know, it said, find out more information on Splatnet. And so I went and there wasn't much. But then this morning I looked again and there's more information on that. I said Splatnet, I meant Squid Research Lab. You know what I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, and yeah, there's some more information up there, but still not much. They said there's version 4.0 and it's going to have changes to Splatfest. And it looks like really um, good things about Splatfest that they're changing. They're making it a lot easier to work with uh, friends. You don't have to have a full group of four, which is a really good thing. Um, and bits and bobs there, but that, none of that was in the direct. And then there's going to be 4.1 in early October, which is just a couple of weeks away. I don't know why. Maybe they just need a bit more time to spruce things up, but... Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, it wasn't in the, in the direct. It was an interesting stylistic way to do it, but... Hmm, Mega Man 11, yes, Mega Man is coming, it is coming to Switch. We've known, they've showed off a few interesting little bits and bobs here and there. But again, nothing we didn't really know. This, this is um, probably the biggest one that has suffered because of the delay, the rescheduling. Um, which isn't, which isn't a problem, but you know, it, it did have the, you know, demo out now and... That was probably, um, they probably would have done a bit more of a song and dance about it instead of just text at the bottom. So that was fine again. Um, this is, this, 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 this is looking like I didn't like the direct. I did. It's just, this is, this is the less interesting stuff. Civilization 6. I have always wanted to play a Civilization game because I love, you know, real-time, uh, what is it? RTS. It's a real-time strategy game. Or is it even real time? I don't know. I just, I just, I've always wanted to play a Civ game and now I finally have a proper excuse to because it's coming to Switch and that is my platform of choice. You will be surprised to hear working for Nintendo Life. <laughs> but yeah, we don't know much about it yet and how it will work on the Switch, but it looks, you know, it's going to be a Civ game. Civ games have always been good and yeah, looks good. City Skylines. This looks like a Sim City type of thing, you know, as a city simulator which does just sound like SimCity, but the other way around. It looks interesting. It'll be interesting to see some, other, you know, what other people think and to actually get a proper good go at it in case it's, you know, a little bit lackluster. It's, you don't know until you get your hands on it, but it looks like it does have some promise. So, yeah, I quite like the look of that one. Capcom Beat-Em-Up Bundle. This was, this was a real surprise. I don't think anyone could have predicted this one, but it's just... It's, it's a bit like, I suppose, a bit like all the Street Fighter, you know, Street Fighter Anniversary Ultra Super Duper Collection thing that we've had God knows how many times, only it's just for beat-em-ups and, you know, being a bit broader. It looks interesting. If you're into your beat-em-ups, then yeah, you can't really complain. Capcom really was the king back in the day. And yeah, it just, I'd, but, you know, it's just, it's just a load of old games again, you know. It's certainly not a bad thing and really pleased that it's coming to the Switch, but it's, Still just a load of old games. I'd be far more excited if it was a new beat-em-up, but you can't have everything. Demon Ex Machina. And yes, it is Demon, because I mispronounced that for so many years in my youth. It's not Damon. Once again, we didn't really see that much about the game and, you know, sort of the overarching things, you know, like the story and how the combat's going to work. But we got a new taste of it and it looks really good. I'm just... I just want to know more about it. I want something a little bit more substantial and this was more just sort of little bits of information, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's good to keep the hype up and uh, to keep people interested rather than just dolloping a load of information. Maybe it's going to be a bit, you know, complicated and so they want to try and ease people in. I don't know, but you know, I like what I saw and uh, oh, that art style just looks so good, doesn't it? And I'm, and I'm, I'm, an, I'm an absolute sucker for some mech combat. Asmodee Digital looks like they're bringing a load of uh, card games and tabletop games to switch through that platform and that looks yeah looks it's a good way to do it it would be really cool if you could have like like a, a big sort of like flat screen like a a switch xl or something like that or some sort of external thing that was like touch screen and you plug it into the switch this this is this is complete nonsense by the way this is just me dreaming katamari damasi re-roll i thought Oh, I've always wanted to play Katamari Damacy, yeah, but it's always been on a Sony platform and I've never really owned a Sony platform, certainly not growing up. I always had Nintendo stuff, 
So this is a great opportunity, and you know, to be able to play it on the go, it's great. It's just such a ridiculous game, and I love me some ridiculousness. So yeah, really excited for that one. I also felt it was really apt the Katamari Damacy re-roll came just before they started talking about Nintendo Switch Online. Which, you know, and there's all the stuff about the save data and they don't want people re-rolling random items. I just thought that was apt. They also showed off Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. And yeah, it was just showing, you know, much of what we'd seen in uh, Japanese stuff before. Which, you know, is absolutely fine. You know, it's good to see this stuff in English and, you know, to have it properly delivered to us and not rely on second-hand translations. And yeah, you know, you know, they're replacing HMs, which, you know, were kind of dead in Sun and Moon. So yeah, it, it just looks like more information about that. It's fun. Um, I just want to play it, to be honest. <laughs> Super Mario Party was much the same. We just saw pretty much what we'd seen before, and I was a little bit kind of uh, hoping that we'd see something more about the online. But we didn't really, you know, it was just more, you know, little trickles of new information. Not a bad thing, reiterating a lot of things that we'd seen before. It was just basically advertising the game because it's coming out soon. Town. Town. I am absolutely baffled by this one because Game Freak for the longest time have just been doing Pokemon. Pokemon, 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 you know. They dabbled in a couple of other things here and there, but now they're doing a brand new franchise, you know, a brand new IP, Town. And it looks a little bit Pokemon-esque. The graphics are lovely. And we don't really know much about it, but it does look like it's got some real promise. And Game Freak know how to make a game. So I really want to see some more about this. To be honest, I wish I'd seen more in the direct, but, you know, it was just, you know, maybe early days, you know. It's just coming 2019. Ooh. Then there's the Final Fantasy extravaganza. Oh! This was ridiculous. I mean, we knew about Final Fantasy 15 uh, Pocket Edition HD and probably some other words after it, and we knew about Crystal Chronicles, HD Remaster, or whatever they're calling it. So we knew we knew about those, but I had no idea we were going to be getting so many other Final Fantasy games. I'm going to have to refer to this, because we had, what is it? We had uh, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, Final Fantasy IX, Final Fantasy X, and Final Fantasy X-2. Bloody hell! And then there was the ones we knew about before, and then there's World of Final Fantasy Maxima, which I think looks absolutely horrible. Ah! But the other games, I mean, it's just as if Square, you know, put out Octopath Traveler and like, you know, oh, let's see how this does, and they were just like, oh, the Switch likes Final Fantasy type things, let's just put everything on it. It's great. I mean, I really wish we were getting, um, what is it, Final Fantasy VII? Is it called Advent Children? Or is that the bad film? The remake. The remake of Final Fantasy VII. I'm really hoping we get that at some point, but we haven't we haven't heard anything on any platform about that for a bloody long time. So it's still possible, but you know, not one well, it's not confirmed at all. But it would be lovely now, wouldn't it? But more than happy to give Final Fantasy VII a proper first go, because yes, I've never played it. Again. Sony. Then they also had the bundle, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate bundle. And it was it was leaked beforehand, so yeah, it looks it looks cool. Um, when I was watching it, my fiance was sat next to me as I was furiously trying to live blog, and she was giggling and making noises and trying to talk to me, and I was like, "Shut up!" When the bundle was revealed, she was just like, "Okay, yeah," and then they showed the Joy-Con, and she's like, "Oh, there's one more thing," and then the Joy-Con appeared, and. <laughs> It just did the swipe across, and I think it's a really cool design, but she's not really into her Smash, and she looked at it, and she, <laughs> she just burst out laughing, because it is just the great Joy-Con with a swish. It, it, yeah, it's kind of basic. I still like it. I kind of like the minimalism, but yeah, it's kind of basic. Yoshi's Crafted World. I think I called it Yoshi's Crafted Island. In a previous video, I get things wrong. It looks pretty good. It looks like a Yoshi game, but it's not instilling me with a huge amount of enthusiasm for it. It looks it looks fun, don't get me wrong, and it's, you know, definitely targeted at an audience that probably isn't me, and no problem with that at all, but from my own personal point of view, it looks fun, it looks enjoyable. I think if I were to pick it up and play it, yeah, great, but I don't think it's gonna sort of stick in my mind as one of the greatest games for the Switch, or even just one of the best games for the Switch, you know, it it looks it looks fun, it looks fine. It just it's just a Yoshi game, and Yoshi really is kind of a little bit B-tier in terms of Nintendo games, and no problem with it. 
it looks good, it looks fun. It's probably going to be a solid 8 out of 10 or, you know, maybe even a 9 if it's really good, but I'm not going to write home about it. Same thing could be said for Super Mario... Uh, new Super... Oh, Christ, what is it? New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Long. It's New Super Mario Bros. U, but with some more gubbins thrown in and only a few bits. So it, it's um, New Super Luigi U as well. And it's a fine game. I, I find it difficult to get excited over the new Super Mario Bros. games just because they do feel a little bit dated and a little bit simplistic and a little bit uninspired. You know, there was that one level that looked like a looked like a um, looked like a painting, almost looked like a uh, uh, a Van Gogh painting, and that was gorgeous. And I I can't help but play it and think. Why isn't the rest of the game looking like this? It's a no-brainer that they bring it over, and it's gonna it's probably gonna sell well, but eh, just I just eh, I've played it, I've played it already. And it's not like bringing it to the Switch is doing anything to sort of spice it up a bit. I know I've sung the praises of other ports in the past from the Wii U, things like Bayonetta and stuff like that. But that's because, you know, it was, you know, Bayonetta 2 was only on the Wii U and so transferring it over was a big thing, but New Super Mario Bros. U is nothing new compared to the other new games. God, that's confusing. I'm just not bowled over by it. it it's fine, you know, it, it's fine. But yeah, it's New Super Mario Bros. U. It's, it's just what it is. Oh, Luigi's Mansion 3! I can't believe this was in there. I genuinely can't. I didn't, you know, I heard a lot of people saying there should be a Luigi's Mansion 3. There should be this, should be that, and that's fine. But to actually do it? Wow, Nintendo, you crazy mares. I can't say that word. You crazy Margaret Flapjacks. We didn't really see much of the game, but it was just enough just to tantalize me and just to be like, yep, there's going to be a new Luigi's Mansion game. Uh, a lot of the ghosts did look the same, but, you know, the fact that they showed so little probably means it's pretty early on in development. So I'm still holding out hope that it's going to have all the sort of the charm and the loveliness that we come to expect from the franchise. And uh, I never man never managed to play the second one because it was always expensive. And I wasn't working for Nintendo Life then, so I didn't get games for free. But I just love Luigi's Mansion, so I'm just, I'm just really excited. I just want to play it. And I'm so pleased they opened up with that. What a, what a way to open up the Direct. Just, you know, here we go. New Luigi's Mansion game. It just, it, oh, just, mwah, absolutely superb. So I'm really, really, really excited. Really want it to be good. And then jumping right to the end, Isabel in Super Smash Bros. I, I'm not I'm not terribly surprised by it, but I am really, really ruddy pleased to say the least. What's even more exciting for me is that she's not an Echo Fighter. She's not just villager, different skin. She's got an entirely new moveset, which is great because there was loads of potential in villager that wasn't realized just because there's so many things you can do in Animal Crossing, you know, things like the fishing line and everything. It's just, oh, it just, and I'm just really excited and I'm really pleased because I do love Isabel. She's a great character. I saw some people complaining online that, you know, who really asked for this? You know, did anyone really want this? And you got to remember, there's a lot of people who really like Isabel. And more importantly, Japan absolutely goes gaga for her. So, you know, we've had, we've had King K rule. That's a very Western thing. Japan's getting Isabel. And so am I. I'm really pleased that they then followed it up with the whole... Animal Crossing is coming to Switch as well, because to have that beautiful animation that they had with, you know, Isabel in the town hall running around doing things and then to just use that just for Smash would have been a bit cruel. Maybe a sort of a standard pre-rendered thing like uh, King K. Rule, and even like Villager when Villager was revealed for Wii U, that would have been better if it wasn't going to be, you know, Animal Crossing. And also I think maybe they've learned their lesson after showing Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival on Wii U. Just this lovely HD Animal Crossing and then it's a crappy board game! So yeah, really pleased. I think they did really well towards the end there. To be honest, overall, I think the whole Direct was really, really impressive. Um, I did notice that the, um, the uh, Animalese at the end in Animal Crossing did not match up because I always remember yes actually sounds like yes in it. And when Tom Nook said yes, it was just... Nintendo. Do your research. But overall, I think it was a really solid direct, really jam-packed full of stuff. And a lot of things were a little bit sort of, oh, that's that's cool. That's interesting. 
But there was nothing in there that I thought, oh, that's rubbish. Apart from maybe the Nintendo Switch Online, but we'll get onto that another time. And overall, yeah, I just think it was really solid. You know, new stuff like the Animal Crossing at the end and Luigi's Mansion at the start was a beautiful way to bookend it. Two brand new things, and even though there wasn't much to say about them, from Nintendo's point of view or indeed from ours, it was just a brilliant way to sort of start it and finish it. I thought that was excellent. Um, it, it didn't feel like that they were teasing or, you know, sort of tricking us in any way without then sort of turning it around and saying, no, it's fine. Yes, you know, it, you know, we're not just teasing you with the prospect of Animal Crossing in HD. You're actually going to get an Animal Crossing in HD. And that's what we wanted. Christ, I think I'm going to have to finish it there because this video is a long one. But of course, do let me know what you thought of the Direct down there in the comments because you, I, I'm not the only one with an opinion. Do you hate Isabel? Let us know so we can tell you how wrong you are. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you hook, line, and sinker that subscribe button like Isabel does in Smash? And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,